lot of us parents have been under this little cloud of, of, of we're okay because high school course is teacher who said you can't use Common Core. It's been debunked and we're finding it all over. It was found in the Keller ISD and then point blank said, we align with TEKS and if it happens to align with Common Core, that's just too bad. They know it, the material being put in is Common Core. Um, is there anything that can be done to take and add teeth to House Bill 462 to get Common Core out once and for all? Yes, and this is this is a, a new understanding I have since I went in 2010 about C scope and all the exposure. Sure That's thing. what's happening. Uh, to, we thought if we didn't take the federal money, we wouldn't have the federal strings. But we didn't take the money, but we got the strings. Um, I beg to differ on that point because Houston, one of the biggest schools in Houston ISD, won the race to the top funds, mm -hmm. which in my understanding and research of Common Core, when you take the race to the top funds, that ties your state. That's the reason Governor Perry was against it, because of the hog tie to the Common Core standards, and Houston was one that won. Race to the this is what I think. We start with an understanding of our conscious constitutional pro, uh, mandate. Uh, the reason we have public schools in Texas to provide a system of free and efficient public schools. And the purpose of that is expressly stated, and I'm paraphrasing, is because of liberty. We want people to understand their liberty and are ready and able and willing to defend their liberty. That's, we thought that it was essential uh, that people be educated so that they could do that. And that's why, that's the only reason Texas government is in the education business. But that's not what we're doing. In fact, what we're doing is the opposite of that purpose. We're not uh, educating our children to love liberty, we're indoctrinating them to accept socialism. Okay. And so we're violating our constitution right now. Forget about freedom, forget about the official. It, the purpose is contrary to why we're doing this. So what I say is eliminate property taxes, school property taxes, replace it with nothing. Allow that money that comes from the state of Texas directly to the school districts, which is about $6,000 per student now, maybe more with all this additional all the revenues that go into the permanent school fund. But that six, seven thousand dollars continue to send that, and that's all. That right there, to me, meets our constitutional mandate. If you can't educate a child with, with the internet and all the things we've got now, with, or six or seven thousand dollars, then you need to rethink things. But I said the school district should be able to, or the locale should be able to supplement that if they want to, with a one penny sales off the tax option. Now, but we say the money comes, to get to your point, the money comes from the state of Texas in order for you to uh, promote liberty. And if you're not doing that, you don't get the money. And Cisco, the Common Core, does not promote liberty. So you either root that out or you don't get the money. So, and that's why I say that we can do this at state level. Because you can't say that that money comes with no strings of right there in the face of a constitutional mandate, the reason why it's coming in the first place. So you comply with that, or you don't get the money. The, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. There was one other part to that. <coughs> Are you pro homeschool? For yeah. the, because Texas is one of the few that doesn't have a whole lot of requirements for homeschooling. Yes. Other than the one kind of rogue judge that took the children away from the homeschooling family. Well. Uh, I'm not familiar with that in Texas. That is just maybe you can tell us that. That's okay. But yes, I, I want it to, this money that comes from the state of Texas, I want to find ways to do that more efficiently outside the independent school district framework. We don't have to do it that way. We don't have to have that huge bureaucracy and other things that interfere with the actual education of students. I want to find that ways to get that money directly to, more directly to the parents, the student, and the teacher. So, I, I don't really call that vouchers, but it's just a way that, that funnels it more to where people want. So, I mean, we can, and this is what we have to do. We have to either just throw everything out and rebuild our government schools from the ground up, our government education system from the ground up. You know, find ways that you can have a hybrid of homeschooling, but then they go to some central place or neighborhood place to get some aspect of their education, you know, so that we've got a chemistry lab or, or something that, that you won't have in your home. Uh, something like that. We have to find a way to do that. Or if we can, then I'm ready to call for a repeal of our constitutional mandate and the government out of the education business altogether. 
my question is kind of along the same lines on the opponent of the voucher system. I believe if you have school of choice, that breeds competition and better schools. Mm -hmm. I think we need to give um, the public schools have the monopoly on it now. Mm -hmm. And while we see what we do with the public schools, we get crappy education. So I just wanted to know your stance on, say, a voucher system in Texas, uh, where we give that choice that you're talking about back to the localities, back to the parents, mm -hmm. and they can take that money and do with it as they please to educate their child. That's what's where we're going when I say give her school property taxes. Yeah. That frees up an enormous amount of income mm -hmm. and wealth that can be go to that purpose. But yes, I do want to make it easier for people to do that. But I don't think vouchers, the way people have thought about it in years past, is, is enough. I don't think it's sufficient. It still leaves that big government chunk there. And they're turning out people that aren't prepared to defend their liberty, aren't prepared to live life. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a da that's damaging all of us. So you can send your children somewhere else, but the children that come out of that system, that's still a problem. Kathy. As governor, because even my fantastic mind doesn't know everything about politics, as governor, would you have the say concerning amnesty? And if you do, what would it be? Well, I'm against amnesty, but I don't know that I have to say. But let me go ahead and talk about my plan for border security and immigration. Yes. Border security is secure the border using our own Texas State Party, which is really just a defending and, and uh, a Texas state law against trespass. Because the property owners, people that live on the border, have the same rights to have their property rights respected as people that live anywhere else in the state of Texas. And they have the same right as the government to come to them and, and assist them. The state Guard, I say because it's under the total control of the government, can never be nationalized. The English legislature can't tell the government what to do with the state guard. But we do need to beef up the state guard, the state guard so that they can have this expanded mission that can meet that better funding, better equipping. But look, I don't see that as a big problem. But, so that's what we do. We yeah. secure the border. Also, immigration. We take control of immigration in our state. Mm -hmm. Immigration is not in the federal constitution. It's not the federal government's job. Naturalization is, and that's kind of the idea, I yeah. suppose. Uh, but not immigration. And in time past, we, I've seen pictures of Texas immigration offices down the border. So we should make our own decision about what kind of uh, immigration policy we want to have. And I'm favoring a welcoming guest worker program. But you take care of all these details there at the border. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a job, okay, here. Uh, you you uh, would agree not to seek or uh, receive any taxpayer funded services, okay, here, including school education. Uh, you need a driver's license. You have a DPS office right around the corner. You need insurance for your car. Whatever the citizens have to do. Right. Make that part of it. And then they can come and go. And I wouldn't even put a limit on how much. It, the market will decide how many people participate in that system. If you've got a job here, then and you meet all these rules, then you can come and go. But that's got nothing to do with uh, citizenship. We're not talking about it. Uh-uh. And nothing to do with amnesty. I mean, just because you're here to participate in the program, well, maybe that will give you a leg up if you decide to seek citizenship. I would hope so. But there's no <coughs> express language. Right. Okay. Any other questions for Kathy? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.